All right, so basically today is an insight into uh, what I cook, how I cook, when I'm not cooking Southeast Asian food at the restaurant. This is gonna be a roasted butternut pumpkin gnocchi, that flavor profile with the Jacobs Creek double barrel Shiraz. Nice combination, and I'm getting pretty excited about this because I don't do it very often, but when I do, I get into it. So we've had this half butternut pumpkin roasting in the oven, oil, salt over the top, 180 degrees for about an hour and a half, okay? So you don't wanna get a heap of color on there, but look at that, it's so soft. The key is removing as much moisture as possible. Using this technique of hanging it in the chuck, squeeze everything out of it, just like ricotta. The less moisture, the less flour you need to add into the mix. Uh, so the lighter and fluffier gnocchi you're gonna have in the end result. That's what we're after. What we should be left with, look at that. Beautiful. So 400 grams of that, I'm gonna go in. I go in with two yolks. I'm gonna go in with about 50 grams of double zero flour. Good dose of parmesan over the top. Right, little pinch of salt in there. A little bit of nutmeg, just a touch, like half a teaspoon. So we're just gonna gently work that in together. It was a bit of a pantry raid, how, how I came up with this dish. It was a winter night, um, sitting by the fire, wanted something a little bit more sort of filling and rustic, and this is what we came up with. All right, we've just put a little splash of flour in there just before we start to roll it. First times I went to roll gnocchi, but oh, I had this massive mound of potato gnocchi on the bench and I was like, oh man, this is gonna take me forever to get through and roll. So I was cutting off these enormous sections, probably about half the size of that, and trying to roll it out. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to manhandle and, and, and keep control of this gnocchi that's just getting out here and out here. It, was, <laughs> it wasn't a pleasant experience. So just take little sections. Put a flour on the bench and just go with a manageable size, okay? You don't, you don't need to rush through this just a manageable size that you can keep control of. It's always a good sign when it's not sticking to the bench. Little knife, sharp knife, and we're just gonna go through and just cut as evenly as possible. All right, water's boiling. Noki's done, let's get him in. All right, Noki has come to the surface. We all know that is the indicator. They're ready to go. Out of the pot, we've got a pan here, roaring hot. We're just gonna throw them in there. You don't have to go through this secondary process of frying them off. Uh, this is a personal preference. And just crisp them up on both sides. So good. Fried off beautifully. Now we're gonna go with this sauce and it's, it's pretty quick fire. Kick it off with the bacon. So it's smoked bacon, really nice link. Um, seeing as though we've got the double barrel Shiraz um, and those guys are finished in the whiskey barrel just like it's bigger brother. Got a little bit of color on the bacon there. Now we go over the top. Small red onion diced up, few cloves of garlic. And then we're gonna sweat that down before we go in with the tomato paste. All right, time to go in with the Tuscan kale. The best part about this dish, all right, so we braise it. We're gonna go in there, stems and all, and then we go straight over the top, about a cup of chicken stock. All right, so lid on. There's a bit more moisture in there. It's a little bit more of a stock-based sauce, um, which is something I really enjoy about this dish. A little sprinkle of salt in there. But that is delicious. Look at the colors in there, amazing. Fresh tomatoes in. Just got some cherry tomatoes quartered up there. In with our gnocchi and just toss that through. Yes. Fresh parsley. Brother. <laughs> oh my lordy. There we go. There is another one. And guys, we have dabbled in dishes from all corners of the globe, pairing them with an Aussie icon. The whole, the whole message that I'm trying to get across here is you don't have to be an expert every time you walk into the kitchen. It's about being experimental and opening yourself up to the world of food and wine.